Avoid this mistake if you want healthy relationships, ignoring the subtle signs that someone might not value you as much as you value them. Relationships can often feel like puzzles, where every piece, trust, respect and effort needs to fit perfectly. But what happens when the pieces don't align? When guilt tripping, superficial bonding or even the lack of genuine interest slowly erode the foundation of what you thought was solid? This video is your guide to recognizing these signs before they lead to heartbreak or burnout. Together, we'll dive deep into the subtle yet powerful behaviors that can silently sabotage your connections. Because the truth is, healthy relationships don't just happen. They're built with care, awareness, and mutual respect. Ready to uncover the truth about the relationships you hold dear? Let's get started. Number one, guilt, tripping, and manipulation. Imagine a relationship where you feel deeply connected to someone, a bond that seems unbreakable. You share laughs, support each other, and feel like you're part of something meaningful. It feels good to know someone depends on you, right? You're happy being there for them, and in return, you expect the same kind of care and understanding. But what happens when this connection becomes a tool used against you? When instead of honest communication, you're met with guilt trips and emotional manipulation. Let's dive into what guilt tripping really is. It's not just a passing comment that makes you feel bad. It's a calculated strategy. For instance, imagine your friend or family member saying things like, I guess you're too busy for me now, or after everything I've done for you, this is how you repay me. At first, you might brush it off, thinking they're just expressing frustration, but over time, the pattern becomes clearer. These words aren't just casual. They're designed to control your actions, to make you question your decisions, and to bend your will to suit theirs. For many, this hits a nostalgic chord. Think back to your childhood or teen years. Maybe it was a parent, a teacher, or even a friend who made you feel this way. You might remember wanting to please someone so badly that you ignored your own needs. You told yourself, if I just do this one thing, they'll be happy with me. The memories might feel bittersweet, because while you wanted approval, you often felt like you were walking on eggshells. Now think about your present relationships. Do you notice these patterns repeating? Do you often feel obligated to say yes to someone just to avoid a confrontation? The curiosity creeps in here. Why do people resort to guilt tripping? Is it about power, insecurity, and more importantly, how can you protect yourself without damaging the relationship entirely? Number two, selective availability. Picture this, you've had a long day and you really need someone to talk to. You pick up your phone and call a close friend or family member, someone you've always been there for. The line rings, no answer. You text, hoping they'll respond, but the hours stretch into days. Frustrating, isn't it? Yet when they need something, whether it's advice, help, or even just to rant, you're their first call, and they expect you to drop everything. This is the subtle yet destructive habit of selective availability. It's the kind of behavior that can chip away at even the strongest relationships. When someone only makes time for you on their terms, it sends a clear, albeit silent, message, you are not a priority. Initially, it's easy to justify. They're busy, you tell yourself. But over time, the imbalance becomes undeniable. The more you're always available for them, and the less they are for you, the more it stings. Nostalgia might draw you back to those early days in the relationship, when things were different. Maybe you were teenagers, and they would spend hours on the phone with you, talking about everything under the sun. Or perhaps in the beginning, they seem to prioritize your needs just as much as theirs. The shift, when it happens, can feel like a betrayal of those cherished memories. This begs the question, why do people become selectively available? Is it that they're truly overwhelmed, or do they simply take your reliability for granted? 
And for you, how long is too long to accept this dynamic? Exploring these questions often leads to uncomfortable but necessary realizations. The curiosity here isn't just about them, it's about you, your boundaries, and how much you value your own time. Number 3. Persistent Lack of Respect Let's set the scene you're in a conversation, sharing an idea or expressing a feeling, and the other person interrupts you. Maybe they dismiss your opinion outright or laugh it off as if it's not worth considering. At first, you might shrug it off, thinking they didn't mean to be rude, but then it happens again and again. Slowly, it dawns on you this isn't just a misunderstanding, it's a lack of respect. Respect is one of the foundational elements of any healthy relationship. It's what makes you feel seen, heard and valued. When someone consistently disregards your thoughts, belittles your achievements or invalidates your emotions, it's not just hurtful, it's toxic. Over time, this lack of respect erodes your self-esteem. You begin to question yourself, am I overreacting? Do I even deserve to be heard? This might remind you of moments from the past. Maybe it was a teacher who dismissed your questions in class or a peer who laughed at your dreams. Nostalgia has a way of amplifying these memories, making you relive the sting of those early experiences. And here's the tricky part. The people who disrespected you back then might not even realize the impact they had. But for you, those moments became lessons in self-worth or sometimes in self-doubt. Fast forward to now. How do you deal with someone who persistently disrespects you? Is it about confrontation or is it better to distance yourself? The curiosity here lies in unraveling the motivations behind their behavior. Are they insecure themselves? Do they even realize they're being disrespectful? And most importantly, how do you ensure that their actions don't define your sense of worth? Number four, superficial bonding. Picture this, you're at a gathering or on a call with someone you consider close. They ask, how have you been? You answer, offering a glimpse into your life, work struggles, dreams or challenges. They nod, maybe even chuckle at your jokes, but you notice something odd. They don't ask follow-up questions, nor do they seem genuinely interested. Instead, they steer the conversation toward shallow topics, or worse, themselves. You're left feeling like you've shared something personal, but the connection didn't deepen. This is the hallmark of superficial bonding. Superficial bonding often masquerades as genuine connection. On the surface, these interactions feel warm and friendly. They might include shared laughs, inside jokes, or discussions about mutual interests. But when you dig deeper, you realize the relationship lacks substance. Conversations stay on the surface, avoiding vulnerability or emotional depth. Over time, this dynamic leaves you feeling unfulfilled, as if you're sharing space with someone but not truly connecting. For many, this brings back nostalgic memories of past friendships or relationships. Remember those childhood days when forming connections seemed effortless. You might recall talking for hours with a friend about your wildest dreams, fears, and future plans. Back then, it felt like you could share anything without judgment. Now, as an adult, those kinds of connections feel rare, replaced by interactions that often seem transactional or obligatory. The realization of superficial bonding can spark curiosity. Why do some relationships never evolve beyond the surface? Is it fear of vulnerability, a lack of interest, or perhaps the other person doesn't know how to build deeper connections? For you, the key question becomes, is this relationship worth nurturing, or is it time to invest in connections where mutual growth and depth are possible? Number five, absence in crucial moments. Imagine you've hit a significant milestone or faced a challenging setback. Maybe it's a promotion you've worked tirelessly for, or perhaps you've lost a loved one and feel utterly alone. 
You reach out to someone who's always claimed to care about you. You expect them to show up, physically, emotionally, or both. But instead, you're met with excuses. I wish I could be there, but I'm swamped with work, they say. Or worse, silence. The absence of someone during your most crucial moments stings in a way that's hard to describe. It's not just the disappointment of their physical absence, it's the emotional void that hurts the most. Relationships are built not only in moments of joy, but also in times of need. When someone isn't there for you when it matters most, it raises questions about their commitment and priorities. This absence might remind you of past experiences. Perhaps there was a time in your life when you needed support, a school recital, a hospital stay, or even a breakup, and the people you expected to lean on weren't there. The nostalgia of those moments lingers, shaping your expectations and fears in current relationships. But this realization also fuels curiosity. Why do some people fail to show up when it truly matters? Are they unaware of the significance of the moment, or do they simply prioritize other things? More importantly, how do you address this? Is it about setting clearer expectations, or is it time to acknowledge that the relationship might be more one-sided than you'd like to admit? Number six, being utilized as a means to an end. Think about a time when someone reached out to you, seemingly eager to reconnect or spend time together. At first it feels nice, flattering even, that they thought of you. But as the conversation unfolds, you realize they have an ulterior motive. Maybe they need a favor, a recommendation, or a resource only you can provide. The warmth you initially felt turns cold, replaced by a sense of being used. Being utilized as a means to an end is one of the most painful forms of relational imbalance. It reduces you from a person with thoughts, feelings, and experiences to a utility, a tool for someone else's benefit. The worst part? Often, these interactions are dressed up in the guise of friendship or care, making the realization all the more jarring. For many, this resonates with past experiences. Perhaps there was a friend in high school who only called you when they needed homework help, or a colleague who seemed friendly but only interacted with you to gain professional leverage. Looking back, those moments leave a bitter taste, even as they teach you valuable lessons about boundaries. The curiosity here is profound. Why do people treat others this way? Is it a lack of empathy, or are they simply unaware of how transactional their behavior feels? And for you, how do you set boundaries to protect yourself without becoming overly guarded or cynical about future relationships? The answers might lie in a careful balance between kindness and self-respect. Number seven, lack of detailed personal interest. You're talking to someone who's supposed to know you well, a partner, a best friend, or even a family member. You mention your favorite movie, a hobby you're passionate about, or a personal goal you've been working toward. Their response, a blank stare or a vague acknowledgement. It hits you they don't really know these things about you. They might know the basics, where you work, your favorite food. But when it comes to the details that make you you, there's a surprising void. The lack of detailed personal interest is a subtle but telling sign of emotional distance. It suggests that while the person might care for you in a general sense, they haven't invested the time or effort to truly understand you. Over time, this can make you feel unseen, as though your uniqueness doesn't matter to them. Nostalgia can make this realization even more poignant. You might think back to a time when someone did take the time to notice the little things, your favorite songs, the way you take your coffee, or the dreams you whispered late at night. Those moments of feeling truly known are precious, and their absence in current relationships can feel stark. This lack of interest often raises deep questions. Why don't they care about the details? Is it a reflection of their personality, their priorities, 
or the nature of your relationship? And for you, how do you address this? Is it about communicating your needs more clearly, or is it time to evaluate whether the relationship aligns with your emotional expectations? The curiosity here isn't just about them, it's about you and what you value in meaningful connections. Recognizing the hidden signs of an unbalanced relationship isn't easy, but it's a crucial step toward building the life and connections you deserve. Whether it's spotting superficial bonds, understanding the pain of absence during crucial moments, or realizing when you're being used as a means to an end, every insight you gain empowers you to prioritize yourself and foster genuine, meaningful relationships. If you've made it this far, drop a hundred in the comments. This shows you're among the top 0.01% who commit to understanding and improving their lives. If you're truly ready to transform your mindset and relationships, hit that subscribe button and join our community. Together, we'll keep pushing boundaries and making life better one step at a time.